Greetings all, Jesse here. Uh, it's It's been about two weeks since the great Edward Van Halen passed away. It's very tragic. It's hard to it's hard to imagine as a guitar player. It's hard to imagine a world without Eddie Van Halen in it. Um, but I wanted to pay tribute to him. It's taken me a little bit of time to to put something together, but I wanted to perform a song called Blue Ethereum, which came off of the Balance album. It's one of my favorite instrumentals by Eddie and um, probably lesser known to some people. So I, perhaps it'll be something new to a lot of you. Um, so I'd like to play it for you and then we'll take some time and break down some techniques that are used in this that I think are some classic techniques that Eddie used. Um, so even if you're not ready to actually try to play a Van Halen guitar song, you can start to try some of these techniques to improve your playing and to sound a little bit more like Eddie. Enjoy. <laughs> Let's first talk about the title of this song. So in an article from Guitar World back in 1995, Eddie had this to say when asked, what does Belucha Ethereum mean? He said, actually Valerie, that was his wife at the time, tipped me into it. When she heard the song for the first time, she said, that sounds like a dinosaur song because it sounds so big. She started looking through a book and said, how about Belucha Ethereum? And I'm going, what the is that? I started reading and it turns out that 
The Baluchitherium was the biggest mammal that lived in the prehistoric age. Valerie always titles songs. So, <laughs> interesting tidbit about that. I agree, though. This song sounds absolutely huge. Unlike a lot of, especially the earlier Van Halen stuff, where typically there weren't a ton of guitar layers, it still had the sound of like a three-piece rock band a lot of the time. Um, this song has tons and tons of guitar layers, which I love. Um, and what I tried to do with this song is distill the the song into one guitar part. So that's why sometimes it might sound a little cut off in certain places because I'm jumping to another part. But anyways, a couple of notes about the song and then we'll look at the techniques. So first of all, the song is in drop D tuning. So all that means is it's standard tuning, but with the low E string tuned down to a D and we get the that nice low sound. Um, but Eddie doesn't really use it to do what a lot of people do with drop D, which is like this kind of power chord sounds. He's mostly just using it to be able to occasionally grab that, that low D note um, or to hammer to have some cool licks that have open strings. So the first technique that is used a lot in this song is legato playing. And legato is when you don't pick all of the notes, and this can be done on any stringed instrument, but it, it involves a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs uh, in order to have a very smooth sound. So some examples of those legato licks in this song and some things that you could practice would be to start trying this second fret through the sixth fret. And this might be a bit of a stretch, but I'll just show it to you because it's in the song. So you can see I'm only picking one note and then hammering. And then in this particular lick, he does this. Which is, you know, it sounds faster than it really is in, in terms of what you're picking. Um, even the very first lick of the song. uses legato, so it's throughout the song. So these have to do with things that you do with the whammy bar. So Eddie, of course, used the whammy bar a ton, and a couple of his signature things that he did were the dive bombs, which is where basically you just take a note and push the whammy bar down as low as you can go. Like that. I was actually having some trouble with my guitar when trying to film this song, so it threw me out of tune every once in a while, for those of you that have an ear to notice that. Sorry about that. But uh, what Eddie would do sometimes too is to trigger the note a little bit more interestingly is, is like slide up the string and pull off and then dive bomb. So it sounds like this. So that's a fun one. Now, a more mild thing that he did with the whammy bar was the scoop, and that's in the very beginning of this song as well. And the scoop to me is a much more tasteful um, and useful way as far as using the whammy bar on a more regular basis. It creates almost like another articulation or pluck of the note. So right in the beginning of the song, you have this lick. And then you dip the bar down probably about a half step or so. And if you did it slowly, it may or may not work, but when you do it fast, it feels like you're just rising up into the note, and it's very expressive. Something Steve Vai and Jiz Hatcherani and people like that do a lot as well. All right, this one is very, very characteristic Eddie Van Halen. And, of course, we know Eddie for his tapping and stuff in Eruption, but one of the things that I like that he uses a lot in this particular song, and he, he uses it in a ton of other songs, and to me it's really characteristic of him and maybe something that he did more than other people who might use tapping but more of the generic type of tapping, um, is Eddie did this tapped artificial harmonic. And the idea here is that you can hold a note down below and then tap in certain positions on the fretboard and get these different overtones to ring out. So as an example, several times in this song, 
he's holding an A note on the third string, second fret. And then what he does is he's tapping on the ninth fret, the seventh fret, and then the sixth fret. And this produces different notes. And the good trick for this, so it sounds like this. And a good trick for this is to remember to tap on the metal of the fret, so not necessarily in between the fret. You see it comes out better when you actually tap on the metal. Um, and then the other trick to help it ring out more is to give it some vibrato on the fretting finger. Now you can technically do this on an open string as well. So, but yeah, when you fret it, you can obviously move it, you know, do it on any note on the neck that you have the space to do it with. Um, the general trick with this, if you want to find those notes, um, so if the octave of the note is here, so that's on the 14th fret in this case, so you see here's the actual note we're playing, and then here's the octave of that. What you want to do is you want to count back five frets or five half steps, two and a half steps. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So that gives us the ninth fret, okay? So that's how we know that we can do that trick. And then you can go tap there, go back two frets, tap there, and then go back one fret, and you'll get those different sounds. All right, so as an example, let's say we wanted to try somewhere else. Let's try on a different string even, so. Uh, how about a B note, okay? So we'd find the octave of that right here, the B. Notice you can tap that too. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna count back five frets. One, two, three, four, five. That puts us on the 16th fret. Pretty cool, so experiment with that. And then, of course, you can do other things like vibrato, use the whammy bar to shake it a little bit. There's different things you can do. Last but not least, and this is just a more subtle thing. This isn't something that's featured a ton in the song, but it's a technique worth mentioning and something that all guitar players should know. And that's tremolo picking. So towards the end of the song, Eddie does a 20 second fret bend. <laughs> to bend up to a high E. Um, and the first time he does it in the song, he he does it a little bit more uh, subtly where he just kind of like picks it, bends it up, pulls it down, and then goes up again. But at the end of the song, he does this. And he kind of gets a little bit more intense with the note, okay? So tremolo picking, it, it looks almost like fast alternate picking, and essentially it is, um, but at least the way that I approach it is rather than with normal alternate picking where you would mostly use more of your thumb and index finger moving, and then with your wrist, like so. I can only get so fast that way, and a lot of rock and metal players in particular, as well as some, some other styles of music, um, want more more speed, more intensity. And so what you end up doing is you lock your arm and you start strumming or picking rather more with your elbow than with your wrist or your individual fingers. And so a good way to just practice this is you can take open strings and just practice. It takes a little while to get control when you're using your whole arm or this half of your arm is not hitting the other neighboring strings. And so that just takes some practice. But start slow and just keep it steady and then speed it up over time. Like that. Um, and what you can do is do that on each string. Uh, kind of as long as you can, make sure to breathe when you're doing it for long periods of time to build up endurance and to um, make sure that your muscles are getting oxygen and you're not stiffening up too much. But do that on all the strings for, you know, maybe start with 20 to 30 seconds per string and then try to build it up to a minute. 
um, and just kind of speed it up, slow it down a little bit, but keep keep the um, the notes steady instead of like kind of just all over the place. Um, you want it to be a nice steady rhythm. Um, so yeah, so try that. And if you want to get a little bit more creative, you can always, instead of just doing open strings, move the notes around a little bit. And of course, that's actually the same technique that's used in Eddie's song, Eruption, where he's doing that. So again, definitely something characteristic that Eddie used often. All right, just a couple comments about the tone in this song. I don't want to get too heavy into this because I didn't do a lot of research and I also didn't try a ton to really emulate Eddie's tone 100%. At the time of the recording of, of this song, when Eddie recorded it in, in the mid-90s, he would have been using the Music Man Eddie Van Halen signature model guitar, which is similar to the EVH guitars that he put out more recently. Um, that one had a, a D-tuna right here that allowed him to get that drop D tuning we talked about very quickly and then return it to standard tuning. So that's kind of a neat tool to have if you use drop D a lot. He would have been using his PV5150 guitar amps. And then some other things that are used in this song and, and actually throughout the Balance album, which is one of my personal favorite um, Van Halen albums. I know that a lot of people don't feel that way, but I think it sounds great and there's some really good songs on it. Um, but throughout that album, Eddie's guitar tone is huge. And part of how he achieved that was by using an Eventide harmonizer in the studio. And what he did was it's, it split a mono guitar signal into stereo. And on, on one side, it was slightly delayed and detuned, which created like a mild chorusing effect. But with the slight delay and the chorusing, it actually is almost like a choir effect because when people sing together, even if they have great pitch, they're always going to be a little bit off and their timing's just a little bit off. So by emulating that with the Eventide unit, um, with his guitar sound, it gave this thickening effect that was just huge. And then in this particular song, he's also using a couple of delays. There may be more, but it sounds like two delays, one on, on the left and the right. And one is a little bit slower than the other, so it's a little bit of a longer delay. And so you get, um, it's not too prominent in the song, but it's enough that it just adds a lot of spatial sound to the tone and just again makes it sound absolutely huge so in my case what i did was i used in pro tools after recording the guitar part which is through an amp simulator on the universal audio uh, system it's a angle 765 amp um, just kind of did my best to sound close to eddie's distorted tone but then after that i used a sound toys um sound toys little micro shift to create the eventide effect where it's it uh, does the slight delay and then the thickening effect and then i used a um just the stock pro tools dual tap delay um with the the speed on the one side was probably a little over 500 milliseconds and then the other side was a little faster and the maybe the high 300s or something like that. So yeah, feel free to experiment with that. It's a great, huge tone. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this song. And, and if it's not a song you had heard before, I hope that it's one of your new favorite Eddie Van Halen songs. Um, there'll never be anyone like him again. Um, I hope that you learned something about the guitar parts and are inspired to try some of these techniques if you're not using them already. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to them. Take care and God bless.